For today, we're going to talk about the ATNR, the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. The asymmetrical tonic neck reflex is an involuntary primary motor reflex pattern that is present in utero and at birth and it stays on for a few months after that and we want to see it. This reflex is um, triggered by a sensory trigger of the head turning to one side, left or right. So once the head turns to right or to the left, uh, the body goes into what's called this fencing pose. Let's say the head turns to the right, uh, the right side of the body strains while the left side of the body will flex and has this fencing pose. And each reflex pattern is necessary for survival and movement and uh, growth. So this is really important. The ATNR helps with the birthing process. The ATNR helps the child to turn to one side and also for eye-hand coordination later on, but also to roll. Like every reflex pattern built on the other reflex pattern. Some of them work as unison to be able to uh, combine these movement pattern. So think of it as a baby is born and in utero everything is almost coded that's what i like to call it it's like a coded and the and the body uh, before they have this voluntary movement pattern so the first few months in in about a year is movements are reflexive and responsive this it's not really going to the frontal lobe of decision making it's not a voluntary movement it's not intentional it's more reflexive and uh, we have multiple of these patterns in our body and we definitely want to see it and one of it is called the atnr the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex and it's really essential to um, movement pattern it's well known because it's really easily visible as well you can easily test it and in a session and to see if that reflex is, is still present. So once that, you know, there is a stage that should be reflexive and then afterwards you want it to be more voluntary, the child to be to be able to turn head, you know, right and left and not to have this reflexive movement. You want you know, the child to have more voluntary, more control. And that happens with a lot of practice and that practice happens naturally in a you know natural developing and healthy child they do that several times and there's pathways being created from the body to brain vice versa there will be myelination there will be growth and the child knows how to um, be able to move part of the body with ease however when this reflex for instance the atnr which you know kind of divides the body in half the right and left side because you see the movements happening opposite to from each other when it stays present and there is another challenge that they might have and they will have that can be auditory processing issues it can be with uh, visual tracking as well because if it's dividing the body in half the right and left you know they have to team in to be able to work together so you might see visual processing issues tracking the child will have a lot of difficulty with tracking a lot of challenges with functional skills that requires in the classroom where most ot's are asked to come and work with our kids is when they have a child that's having difficulty copying from the board every time they turn you know right or left you know part of the body might even slightly move which makes it really hard to stay on the line so there's a lot of things that will make it really difficult to imagine so imagine you can uh, move your head right or left yeah and you're like moving part of your body and intentionally and you don't even know it and that can be really really dangerous in some occasion for instance in driving when you're driving if you notice that there's sometimes like when you know if you're going really fast and you turn to one side there's the tendency of part of your side you know when you're turning to pull and the the steering wheel to move and that can be actually really dangerous so with an adult who have you know brain injury uh, and uh, this reflex is present and you definitely have to do testing as well and making sure that this reflex is not kicking in as well as other reflex we're just breaking down our real reflex at a time but it's not how it works if one reflex is retained most likely multiple reflexes are also retained and you need to work on multiple at the same time so but think about how dangerous that can become it might be okay when you're catching a ball but not okay when you're driving a car and you can literally get into a car accident because of that which a lot of times actually 
actually happens with a lot of adults. And why is that? Because a lot of adults actually have retained reflexes as well. These retained patterns are still present. It's just that with adults and with functioning adults, we've learned to accommodate for our challenges or for their challenges. They learn to accommodate, so we might not see it. However, you can see it and with a skilled therapist, with a skilled provider, they actually can be able to see it. And I really highly recommend any body workers, yoga instructors or Pilates instructors. I like doing Pilates and, and I'm trained in the Pilates work as well to be able to understand how these reflex pattern kicks in, be able to observe because that will make your work with your clients even better. And I think this is something that needs to be provided a lot more with adults as well. And this work is not really just for kids and, and pediatrics. Population. This is, I really believe it's for everybody. And the more we understand it, the more we're able to support the clients that we're working with. And it doesn't really have matter whether or not it's pediatrics, early intervention, you know, teens or adults. I think it works for everyone. And what you want to see is in the client's body, whether or not these patterns are present and what to do about it. So if you want to learn more and what to do and how to learn and to learn with us, feel free to go to our link and feel free to visit our site as well and reach out to us. If not, and if you have this book and look through the exercises, we have exercises. I've done exercises what can help you in the classroom and some uh, older activities too that you can implement as part of in your yoga session or in Pilates sessions that you can implement as well. You can do it as a play-based in the classroom as well. There's so many options that you can do and use the options that you have here. But most importantly, really take the time to learn and you know really work on your clinical skill in order to learn how to observe because understanding how the body works, what's functional movement pattern is, what's the most efficient movement pattern is for specific activity is key. It's not just, you know, memorizing patterns, but it's, it's really understanding how the body works. And that takes skill, that takes time. So of course you're a specialist and you know that, and, and you're gonna take the time to do that. In the meantime, if you want resources, feel free to use ours. Um, check out the app as well and let us know what you think about that. We're gonna continue to add more and there's more books coming soon as well as more videos videos in there so make sure to check those and these books are written for um, parents educators and therapists to be able to use it as home program school program and treatment plans for therapists i've had a lot of therapists using it and they use it as a treatment tool they just grab and go and be able to use it we have lots of exercises and here recommendation here i think this one has up to 30 Five or 35, 35 exercises um, and recommendation just to target uh, one reflex. However, it also works with several other reflexes as well. Depending on the child that you're working with and the age level, you can combine multiple areas and be able to work on it. Because here we use play. We use play for treatment and a natural environment and their own natural movement in order to incorporate this very specific and targeted exercises to work on the main and the key areas that will give us the best result. So we have several of our resources in our box and we have also launched our app which you can access all of them at once with videos and with the ability to create a playlist for your clients so if using an app is something that you're interested in you wanted to have everything in one place and don't have to carry out all the resources and be able to go from place to place and then you should definitely do that uh, you can create a playlist there and you can send it to your parents and be able to access it for them it's easy for them you don't have to worry about teaching them the exercise we have that laid out for you exactly how they should do it and what to look for all you have to do as a therapist is really finding out 
what your client really needs, understanding your client's baseline, and then modifying the exercise for them because each client is different and then you can be able to send it to them. So we are trying to make a resource very easy to use for our therapists and it's been, uh, we've been finding it very useful and we continue to uh, update it and make it better. So the more you use it and you reach out to us and let us know exactly why you need, what's helpful, what you would wish to have more of and let us know. Okay, so all that you can find in the link below. Until then, I'll talk to you soon. Make sure to follow us and join us up here as well. Talk to you later. Bye.